column is short but in case when this limit that you evaluated is greater than the the ratio you evaluated is greater than the limit so that means your column is said to be slender it's another video of chef Gene academy so in today's video we are going to be looking at slenderness in column in my previous video on column design to the euro code i've already explained the different types of columns that we have based on the various kind of categories so today we are going to be looking at the slenderness in column so from the previous class i've already explained that we have short columns and we also have slender columns so how can we differentiate between them so according to the euro code you can actually differentiate them using what we call the slenderness limit so if you are conversant with the british standard which is the bs code you see that bs 810 recommend a limit for for a brace column and also another limit for an unbraced column so what you, all you just have to do is you have to check your slenderness ratio and then compare this your slenderness ratio with the limit given by the code that is how you can know okay if your column is short and or if your column is slender so the same thing applies to the euro code as well but the only difference here is that there are a lot of other consideration we have to consider for us to be able to say okay this column is short this column is slender so but from definition how can we define a column to be short and a column to be slender it can easily be differentiated using the slenderness ratio but in actual sense what can we say that a column is short so when the column is short what we are trying to say is that it is only the first order effect that is dominant in the analysis and the design of the column that's the implication when the column is short that means the dominant effect in the design and analysis of the column is the first order effect so what is what are the first order effect in the euro code this actually the code actually give a definition for action effect on build on structures so you can have a structure that are subjected mainly to the first order effect an example of that is the short column then we can also have columns that are subjected to the second order effect as well as the first order so and that kind of column as slender column so generally first order effect on column only means that when the action effect on the column is determined from only the structural loadings on the building so we are not trying to consider the structural deformation within the structure so you can actually see that when a column is slender there is tendency for the column under load to deform internally so this can lead to buckling of the column and other structural defects that can apply to column so a simple representation of column slender column is this diagram first diagram to the left is trying to show the effect of first order moment on a column so first order moment are, mo are due to the structural loadings due to external load that are being applied to the column including the self weight of the column and all of that so this is the effect being generated by a first order moment so but due to the slenderness of the column so there is additional additional moment which is called so this additional moment is due to the structural deformation of the column so that's why we have additional second order moment so when you are designing a, a slender column you have to consider the effect of the first order moment as well as the effect of the second order moment even though the beer the euro code recommended that when the second order moment is less than 10 percent of the first order you can ignore the second order so at the end of the day that means the, the the difference between the design of short column and design of slender column is that the the short column is only based on the first order moment but the second column have an additional moment which is due to the second order moment so let's now look at the part of the code and also take an example on how we can determine if a column is short or if a column is slender but before we do that i'm going to recommend my course on udemy which is structural detailing of roc members using autocad 
So here is the course that I'm talking about, structural detailing of reinforced concrete using AutoCAD. So this course is about nine hours video with a certificate of completion at the end of the video. So you are going to learn about detailing of slab, raft, raft foundation, column, beam, shear wall, staircases, foundation, footing, and also how to prepare by medi schedule and how to properly place your structural drawings to sheet with the correct scale so this course is about structural detailing make sure you check it out i'm going to leave the link to this course in the description of this video you can check that out let's now take a look at an example of how to check if a column is said to be short or said to be slender using the euro code so we are going to be looking at this parameter of design the exit load of the set column is uh 873 kilonewton then the bending moment along the x direction is 7.3 kilonewton meters the bending moment along the second direction is 2.0 kilonewton meters then taking the sizing of the column to be 300 by 300 rc column so you want to check a column of size 300 by 300 with that exit load and bending moment to check if this column can be said to be slender or short so to do this to perform this exercise we have to refer to plus 5.8.3 of the code so this code actually explain about slenderness in column so before we look at the examples so this is the code this is the formula given for the slenderless limit according to clause 5.8.3 20 equals a b c divided by square root of n so actually a can be given by 0 0.7 b can be given by 0 0.1 c is 1.7 minus rm rm is moment ratio n is equals to the axial load divided by the area of concrete and fcd so but before we look before we run through this exercise let us go to, let us look at clause 5.8.3 of the code this is euro code 1992 part one of one so this is clause 5.8 analysis of second order effects with exit load so all we have to do is to come to 5.8.3 so where we discuss about slenderness criterion for isolated members you can see that the value of the slenderness limits is recommended this is the recommended value 20 multiplied by a b c square root of n so each of this is defined a is given as this but when this is not known this is referred to as the festive creep ratio when it is not known you can take a conservative value of 0 0.7 for a the same thing applies for b a conservative value of 1.1 can also be used the same thing applies for c but the reason why we don't normally apply this conservative value for r for c is because rm can actually be determined from your analysis because rm is the moment ratio that is the division of the top moment from the bottom moment you know when you analyze your column you can have moment at the top and also at the bottom of the column so just the ratio of these two column we give you rm and then you cannot substitute to get your c so this is where you can refer to in analysis of slenderness in column so under this you can also have the what we call the effective length because this is also important in determining the if a column is slender or not so this is the formula for the slenderness ratio so this slenderness ratio is what we are going to compare with the limit and then check if the column is slender or short so the effective length is given by this figure 5.7 so when you have a pin pin condition the effective length is equal to the length of the column when a part of the column is fixed and then the other part is free as you can see in figure 5.7b then the effective length is equal to twice the length so goes on and on now to determine c all we have to do is to know what condition is your column so for this example we are going to pick the condition of a fixed end a fixed end column at the top and a pin end column at the bottom so at the end of the day we are going to have condition a so we can say that our c is going to be 1.7 because 
when the bottom condition is zero and the top condition is uh is a particular value so when you find the ratio you are going to end up with zero so c equals to 1.7 minus zero so at the end of the day you are going to have zero so therefore you have you can now say that our c is equals to 1.7 based on the assumed uh assumed end condition so the next thing you have to determine is your fcd and fcd is given by the formula alpha cc fck gamma c alpha cc is a correction factor kind of for the concrete and it is assumed to have a value of 0 0.85 is between it cannot be more than one so according to the uk national annex you can use a value of 0 0.85 fck is the characteristic strength of concrete so for this particular example we are going to stick with 25 gamma c is a partial factor of safety of concrete which is 1.5 so substituting all those that we are going to have fcd to be equal to 14.2 so once you know fcd then you know the axial load which is n then you, the ac is the area of concrete you know the concrete is 300 by 300 so therefore you are going to have square root of n is going to give you 0 0.83 so when you substitute exact load of 873 kilonewton then area of 0 0.8 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 then multiply by your fcd so you are going to end up with square root of n equals to 0 0.83 so substituting all these parameters into the slenderness limit so you are going to have your slenderness limit to be equal to 31.5 so this is the slenderness limit all you have to do now is to determine the slenderness ratio the value of the slenderness ratio is given by the effective length of the column divided by the moment of inertia you know when i was showing you the code i have already shown you a table where the code gives specification for the isolated for isolated members the effective length of isolated members so let's assume that our column is an isolated member and it is subjected to this kind of condition a fixed end and a pin end so that means the effective length is 0 0.7 of the total height of the column so let's assume the height of our column is 3 meter so at the, at the end of the day so to make it easier instead of estimating the moment of inertia which is uh, sorry estimating i which is moment of inertia divided by the area so in that case you are going to have so this is a shortcut formula your gamma for a rectangular section is 3.468 l naught over h so and then if you are dealing with a circular section you know the most common section is either rectangular or circular so you can use 4.0 l naught over h l naught is the effective length of the column so substituting for l naught and h so you are going to have 3.464 this 0 0.7 is uh you know i said l naught is the effective length the total length of the column is three meters so you have to multiply this the effect you have to determine the effective length which is 0 0.7 multiplied by l so that's why we have this 0 0.7 multiplied by l because we are zooming this condition you can also refer to that part of the code that i showed you earlier figure 5.7 of the euro code i'm going to leave the link to for you to download the code in the description of this video you can also check that out so at the end of the day putting h you know the size of the column is 300 by 300 so convert that to meters 0 0.3 so you are going to have 24.25 so all you have to do now is to com to compare this value this limit this slenderness ratio to the limit so which one is greater so if the limit if the ratio is less than the limit as we can have in as we see in our own case does that means our column is short but in case when this limit that you evaluated is greater than the the ratio you evaluated is greater than the limit so that means your column is said to be slender so you can see from this example that our column is said to be a short column so this is the step in which you can use to determine if your column is short or slender by referring to clause 5.83 of the code
I'm going to leave the link to the to download the code in the description of this video. You can check out check that out. I hope you've been able to learn one or two things from this exercise. So kindly like this video and hit the subscribe button if you've not done that. Thank you. See you in the next one.